This video will demonstrate how survey questions entered in a Power App can query Azure Machine Learning for near real-time predictions. This use case predicts a medical diagnosis based on questions related to bladder inflammation and nephritis symptoms. The technology, however, can be applied to anything entered in a Power App for any use case. In addition to Power Apps and Azure ML, Teams and Power Automate are part of the core solution too. Azure Data Lake, Azure Data Factory, and Dataverse were used for peripheral parts of the solution to prep and host the data, which I'll review later in this video. Just a quick introduction before I get going on the Azure ML and Power Apps integration. My name is Greg Beaumont. I created this demo and video, and I'm a senior cloud solution architect with Microsoft. And quickly, in case you're interested, the use case for this demo, it's using data from the University of California, Irvine. So it's uh, real public data if you wanted to go recreate it yourself. Um, acute inflammation of the urinary bladder and acute nephritis are two separate diagnoses, but they have some overlapping symptoms. So this is a great case for machine learning because you can use different symptoms entered into a survey form and then predict whether somebody has inflammation, nephritis, both or neither. A link to the data set is in the description of the video and a citation for the data that's being pulled from the University of California Irvine site is at the bottom of the page. All right, so moving to the demo, it's actually pretty simple. If I go to the team, predict inflammation and nephritis, Azure ML and Power Apps, I'm on the general channel, and let's go to the Power App, predict inflammation and nephritis. The Power App has some information about the use case, and over here on the right, there's a questionnaire that you could fill out uh, indicating whether or not any of these symptoms are present. Uh, again, these are symptoms, uh, some of them are for inflammation, some are for nephritis, and uh, some are for both. Uh, so burning of urethra, we'll say yes. Lumbar pain, no. Micturition pain, maybe yes. Uh, nausea, no. Urine pushing, yes. And maybe uh, a normal temperature. So if we go ahead and push here, the prediction comes back inflammation. If we were to remove a couple of those, and predict again, you'll see the prediction is neither. If we were to, if we were to switch a few more and maybe add a temperature, nephritis, and let's add a few more. And in that case, it came back both. So depending on the mix of symptoms and temperature, you get different predictions. So the demo is going quickly and smoothly, but what's going on in the back end to make that happen for the front end users? So a person is using a Power App within Teams, submits data into that questionnaire, Power Automate then passes that data to Azure ML. Azure ML makes a prediction based off of that data, sends the prediction back to Power Automate, which stores the results in the Dataverse, so there's a capture of history of everything that was entered, and then it passes it back to the Power App within Teams. So for people who work a lot with Power Apps, they're probably asking, how'd you connect to Azure ML? Well, I actually used an article that I found online. It's written by Sahil Srivastava, and I have a link to the page in the description of the video if you wanna go read it. I didn't figure this out myself. I used this blog article, followed it to the T, and everything works. So there's a part one to this video that shows how to build the Azure ML model. And then this part two walks you through the process of how to deploy a web service with Azure ML, then create a flow in Power Automate that will be used to facilitate data transfer between the Power App and Azure ML. So again, for technical implementation, check out this link. Now I can give you a quick tour of the flow in Power Automate. So if I go up here and hit edit, we'll be able to take a look at everything that's happening behind the scenes. So when that button gets pressed in the Power App that transmits the data, it passes that information using a post command to Azure ML, just like the article I just referenced specifies. Azure ML then returns some results, which can be parsed from the JSON, and then returned to the Power App to show the result while at the same time being posted to the Dataverse. 
And you don't have to use Dataverse. You could use a SQL database. You could use pretty much any type of database. I just chose the Dataverse because it's easy and it's not gonna rack up any additional bills once it's already there and paid for. And you can see that I'm then mapping the responses from Azure ML to the different fields in the Dataverse where it will enter a unique row every time you hit that submit button. Now we can also take a quick look at the Azure ML component. And here in Azure Machine Learning Studio, I can go down to my endpoint. This is a machine learning model that I created in Azure ML. Uh, if you want to use a simple data set just to test out this technology, you can use AutoML and it's effectively code free. It does everything for you. There's a lot of different tutorials out there on how to use Azure ML with AutoML. Uh, if you're more advanced, you can build an extremely complex uh, machine learning model and uh, code everything by hand even if you wanted to. Then you can deploy it to this endpoint and from the endpoint, you can test how it responds to different values that could be entered into the front end power app. Uh, and there's also some logs in here if you want to see the last time it was run. So for example, you can see the uh, times I was running it while filming this video just recently. Now when those values get passed back through Power Automate, not only does it return the prediction to the front end user, but it also keeps a record of it in the Dataverse. So let's take a quick look at that. So here within Power Apps, you can see I have an option for the Dataverse. I can go to the tables that I have available. Under Custom, I have my Azure ML Inflammation table. And when I open that up, you'll see some examples of when the Power Automate script last passed data to the Azure ML model. And it's capturing what the entries were, who entered it, and along with what the result was from Azure ML. Again, you don't have to use the Dataverse. I just used it because it was quick and easy. Now, without getting too deep into the technical details, you may ask, how did that data get served up for Azure ML? In this case, I pulled it from the University of California Irvine's machine learning repository using Azure Data Factory. I loaded it into an Azure Data Lake, which is represented as the bronze layer here. And that's effectively a carbon copy of the data from the source. I then transformed it into a parquet file, which has metadata associated with it, along with a few derived columns, and then also created a gold version of the table that had some derived columns that could be used to add more features, which might be valuable for the machine learning process. Because Azure Data Lake is in the same Azure subscription as Azure ML, everything is in one place and it all just works together. I previously did a video on Azure Data Lake House in an hour. If you want to see a demo on how to build something like this, uh, you can reference that video and uh, just use this data set instead of the one that I uh, used in the video. And one other thing that's nice about having that data sitting in that gold layer of the data lake in Parquet format is you can connect directly to it from Power BI and it'll ingest the data right in, recognize the metadata, and you can just start using it. I actually did this in order to determine what data I wanted to pass to Azure ML in order to build a predictive model. Uh, you can see here that uh, of the four different possibilities of either both inflammation and nephritis, neither or one or the other, you can see the percentage of patients that had the different symptoms along with what the median temperature was for either of those and what the average temperature was. Uh, down here in the bottom left, you can see the total count of patients for each of the four diagnoses as the temperature goes up. Another representation of that in the upper right here on the violin plot shows that you have some overlap. So with the lower temperatures, sometimes they have inflammation, sometimes they don't have anything. Uh, there's, even, there's even patients who don't have either of those diagnoses when they have a high temperature. So there's a lot of overlap here between the different symptoms. Then in the bottom right, this correlation plot actually shows that some of these different symptoms are positively correlated and some are negatively correlated. So you can see, for example, that uh, urine pushing is positively correlated with inflammation, uh, whereas lumbar pain is negatively correlated with inflammation. If I move back to Power BI Desktop, let's go ahead and move to the Power Query layer. And here you can see that as soon as the parquet was imported, it immediately recognized the data types in addition to pulling in the rows and columns. Something that's also really cool here with Power BI is there's the option to connect directly to that Azure ML model. And in this example, you can see where bulk predictions were made. Uh, so let's say you have 
thousands of rows of information that came in from a survey and you want to make predictions on those thousands of rows rather than returning a prediction every time somebody hits a button. Here that survey data came in using the Azure Machine Learning integration button. It then made a prediction based off of those columns and we have new predictions for large volumes of data that can be run through that endpoint in Azure ML. Not the core purpose of this demo today, but a really cool feature if you've got a bunch of data and you want to make some predictions. Even the Azure Data Lakehouse portion of this particular solution was low code. There was a little bit of code, but not much, and it's very easy to learn. So if you've worked with analytic tools in the past, it should not be a hurdle that you're afraid of uh, attempting to scale. In summary, these low code and no code tools from Microsoft make it easy to empower users to put data to work in Power Apps and Teams. They could probably build a simple predictive model themselves in Azure ML, or if you have a team of talented data scientists, they could build an awesome machine learning model, which the end users could then connect to using a tool such as Power Apps in order to make predictions. Links to the supporting documentation are included in the video description below.